if you search for any new job description which is currently hot in the market you could see terms such as migrating applications to the cloud application modernization reengineering replatforming etc in order to understand the basics of migrating an application to cloud we need to understand the application in depth there are different strategies which companies take to identify which application needs to be retired and which application needs to go through a migration phase and there are different migration phases in this video we are going to look at 6 hours of identifying applications and figuring out what strategy we are going to take to migrate that application onto the cloud if you're interested in reading about this do hit the google search with 6 hours and search for amazon amazon has created a white paper around the 6 hour strategy i'm just going to explain the same as a video format with some examples let's get started Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. The six R's include refactor, replatform, rehost, repurchase, retain, and finally retire. These are the six R's which we are going to see in this particular video. And you can choose or you can fit your application in one of this R and take your strategy specific to that particular R. So the first step in an application migration strategy would be to identify where your application migration will fit in, what kind of investment you have and what kind of investment you are ready to make in order to pass through that particular R. So let's dig deep into each of these R's. The first one is refactor or I would like to call it as re-architect. Most of the time we want to re-architect our application to provide cloud native features with the latest updated technology stack. That's when we will look at a strategy something like refactor. If you have heard of greenfield applications, most of the greenfield applications are created with cloud native features in mind. And that's when you will go for a refactor kind of a strategy. Let's take a small example. Let's say I have a Java application which is running in a traditional server. It connects to a database and also it archives some file in some storage location. This is my current simplistic architecture, but it's a monolithic application. It's a legacy application. I want to rethink and use cloud native features in order to create microservices deployment. Imagine I'm going to move towards Amazon Web Services. In AWS, if I relate to each of these services, which I need, I can use S3 for storing the files, which I'm okay with. And I want to archive these files. So I'll be using Amazon S3 Glacier to save some cost. And then for databases, I'm going to use DynamoDB for storing some metadata. And I'm going to use Amazon RDS MySQL or Aurora or maybe Postgres for my database workloads because I don't want to pay huge licensing costs for Oracle. So I'll be using RDS. And for hosting my web services, I'm going to use the Elastic Container Service with scalability and other integrated features within the AWS ecosystem. This is one example of how you will be re-architecting or refactoring your application so that you will have to invest a lot of time in terms of recreating this application from scratch and rewriting it. So the major cost here is going to increase because the time to deliver for your product will be more. So that involves the cost, right? So you have to pay for the resources, you have to pay for the time which you're going to take in order to deliver this particular application into cloud but what do i get as a benefit in the long run it's going to be easy for me to maintain this particular application because you're already using the cloud native features and you've already re-architected so it's going to age well so if an application fits into this kind of a bill you can definitely tag that particular application as a refactor strategy and that's when you should go for refactor strategy let's move on to the next one which is replatform this is another common strategy which a lot of companies try to go to so that they can get less cost effective option. In the previous option, we had to put a lot of time and effort in terms of re-architecting and re-platforming and re-factoring your application. In the re-platform strategy, we are going to lift the application from the traditional server, reshape it or tinker it, basically change something within the application a little bit and then shift it to the cloud. So most of the time, this involves very less configuration changes and environment specific changes. 
and it doesn't involve business specific logics or changes to the application. Let's take an example here. We have a traditional server and when I do replatform, I'm going to deploy this traditional web application, which I'm running it on a traditional server into something like Elastic Kubernetes servers, where I can leverage the platform's capability to deploy microservices and use the scalability aspect within the Kubernetes ecosystem to enhance it and get the cloud native features. So I'm just slightly changing my application so that I can move it to the cloud. Unlike the refactor strategy, I don't have to do majority of my refactoring within the application. Instead, I can just containerize my application into a traditional Docker based image and then I can deploy that image inside an Elastic Kubernetes service. This is a classic example of replatforming. So why would one want to do replatforming, right? So compared to the previous strategy, this is going to be cost effective. I wouldn't say this is the best methodology, but obviously there will be a stage where you will be running your compute inside EKS, but without cloud native features. So you will have to spend some time in the long run to maintain it and also to refactor it later. But you can use replatform as a strategy when you want to quickly migrate to cloud, leverage some of the features, and you don't want to invest more time and cost on refactoring your application. That's when you can go for the replatform strategy. And you have to use continuous improvement strategy in terms of modifying this application to make it better and better. The next one is the rehosting. So rehosting is nothing but lifting and shifting the application and migrating it onto the cloud. If you have a traditional server, you just pick the application within the traditional server, get all the runtimes, necessary softwares, which you have installed within the traditional server, install it within Amazon EC2 instance and deploy the application within that. This is one of the easiest strategies which you can take in terms of lifting the application from a traditional server and then shifting it into EC2. Most of the time you will have to leverage some of the platform specifics. For example, for load balancing, you will have to use Elastic Load Balancer and other services. But when you do lifting and shifting, you may not directly just lift and shift. You might have to use some of the services within the AWS ecosystem. If you're willing to spend more time in refactoring your application a little bit, then you can obviously choose the replatform strategy. So the confusion happens when in when you want to choose between replatform versus rehost. So choose wisely which one you are okay with and which one your application fits in. Now, if you look at the advantages and the disadvantages of this particular strategy, the cost is going to be effective because you're just going to lift and shift your application. But in the long run, you will have to maintain this application. You will not get the scalability aspect of cloud because if EC2 instance goes down, then your application goes down, similar to how a traditional server had been behaving. But since commodity hardwares are running behind the cloud, you can expect failures anytime. So choose wisely which strategy you want to choose, whether you want to choose replatform or rehost based on your budget. The next one is the repurchase. So repurchase is similar to scrapping your existing product and then buying a new product from the marketplace. This could be something similar to how you buy a Salesforce CRM or something similar to Zoho or Freshworks, which, is, which are the new players in the SaaS space, where you don't want to invest a lot on your product. Instead, you just scrap the product which you wrote long back and these are legacy and then you don't want to maintain them. Instead, you go to the market and buy a software as a service product where you just pay only for the usage. A common example for these kind of tools would be the BI tools and the reporting tools. You don't have to create reporting engines again. Instead, you can go to the market and buy some of them. For example, Zoho Analytics is one common reporting tool which you can leverage. Now let's take a use case where I have some applications which are already creating some reports. I need to send these reports to some other downstream systems or I need to send something as email or I have some customer relationship software which I'm running on on-prem. Now I need to migrate that onto AWS. You can definitely leverage services something like Amazon simple email service using which you can send email notification to the recipient. And also you can leverage Amazon Connect to understand the customer dynamics and then you can replace your customer relationship software with Amazon Connect. These are some of the examples of how you can leverage repurchase as a strategy to replace your existing applications. Obviously, what do you get along with it? You get a lot of cost benefit because you do not 
how to spend much time in creating these softwares instead you're leveraging the platform specific services and you just pay for whatever you use and also in the long run this would scale well because you don't have to worry about the scalability and you can leverage the software provider to provide all those features this could be one smart strategy if you think your software can be replaced with an existing software which is available in the market the next one is the retail imagine a state where you don't have any budget at this point in time and you don't want to invest much on your application for migrating it into cloud then you can tag your application as a retain strategy or you can otherwise call it as a revisit because you will have to revisit your application to migrate it onto the cloud at some point in time so you can either call it retain or revisit this is another strategy where people just keep the application and then don't touch it until the next assessment comes obviously if you're running your application on a traditional server it's going to stay there forever until you revisit the strategy so what do i get out of it i'm going to have to maintain the existing traditional server so the cost is going to be the same and in the long run it's going to be difficult for me to maintain because other applications are moving to the cloud this particular application is not moving to the cloud right so i will have to rethink and revisit my strategy so currently the disadvantage would be the cost and the long run maintenance for these types of applications finally the retirement strategy this is one of the last strategy which people would choose because decommissioning an application is not that easy however if a single application is split into multiple applications and you already replaced it or you have bought some part of it or you have rehosted or replatformed some things or the other then you can definitely retire your application so that it can be safely decommissioned and you don't have to worry about maintaining this application forever so this is similar to how you have a traditional server and remove the application out of the traditional server and then just shut it down these are some of the common strategies which people use and they are called as six r's because there are six different strategies let me summarize with an example from amazon's white paper if you want to read about this white paper the link is in the description below you can go ahead and read from there as well just to summarize what we just discussed you need to analyze and assess your application and prioritize what kind of cloud migration strategy you want to choose for that particular application there are six different r's the first one is rehosting rehosting is just lifting and shifting an application so you don't have to invest much on refactoring your application replatforming is lifting and reshaping your application so that you can make it work for the platform and leverage some of the features repurchasing is completely replacing your application with a software as a service product or something which you can purchase with a license and you can set it up the next one is refactoring where you will have to rewrite your application in such a way that you leverage all the latest technology stack with cloud native features and write decoupled applications on the cloud this will be the most costliest strategy because it in it involves a lot of time and effort in terms of refactoring your application the next one is retaining your application basically not changing anything within the application and not moving it out of your traditional server and finally retiring your application makes sense when you have already taken bits and pieces of that particular application and created a separate application and it you think that this application is not needed anymore i hope you are able to understand the different hours of an application migration strategy for migrating your applications to the cloud which one do you think fits in your build do let me know in the comment section below as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much